Hey guys, it's um, Keaton here. I've just gone on for a little ride today and I'm about two hours in and I just thought I'm gonna do a crack at the uh, one in 20 record held by Brendan Canty. He's around the 13 minute mark, so it's, it's gonna be quite a solid attempt to, to do that, but um, I'll give him my best shot. I've been staying in Melbourne for, for a few weeks now and uh, yeah, I've been riding around the Dandenongs and I really enjoyed it, so I thought I'd give it a crack. And off we go. As you can tell, um, I'm starting incredibly hard. At the beginning of the ride, I was planning on aiming for a wattage of about 420, 430, that was my goal. So uh, when I started, I was, I was obviously feeling pretty good because I'm going really, really hard. High 400s, low 500s. You can tell I'm <laughs> feeling way too good for my own good because uh, I'm definitely going to feel this later on in the effort. It's a bit of, of an experience and uh, I, a bit of adrenaline too. You don't really feel the pain of how hard you're really going until a little bit later. You can slowly start to hear me huffing and puffing louder and louder. It's probably about this point where I'm realising Holding this wattage is incredibly hard and I'm only a minute in. Still got another 12 minutes to go, oh joy. But once you get into zone, it's, uh, it's pretty, um, you don't think about much, you just try and keep in rhythm and keep it going. My whole sort of tactic was because I was aiming towards 430 watts average for the whole climb. If it was slightly steeper, I'd uh, increase my power to 440, 450, when, and when it flattened out, maybe a bit less, just to keep it at a sort of constant speed, or the quickest speed I could without blowing too hard. <laughs> Tom also wanted me to uh, to talk during my effort. I don't know. I don't know what Tom was thinking. <laughs> uh, I'd be pretty impressed if I could talk during the effort. Um, he wanted to let me uh, just drop a few side notes for for the viewers. Uh, and I thought, oh yeah, that'll be okay. I could say uh, four minutes. Well, I actually do say four minutes when I get there, but that was about it. That was the last I said anything. I thought it'd be okay, but <laughs> all I'm trying to do really is breathe. As you can say, as you can hear, it's um, seeming like quite a hard task. Also, the 1 in 20 is not really a steep climb. So if you want to go, f I, in my mind, I knew if I wanted to go fast, I'd have to push a slightly bigger gear than I normally would. That way I could get over the gear and actually go faster as opposed to spinning. Spinning would help when it was steeper. Four minutes. But, um, yeah, it doesn't, I think you'd go quicker pushing the big gear. But at the same time, it can be a dangerous move. If you push too much of a big gear and you crack early because your legs give in, 
this is kind of my worry. But as, as I say, once you get in the rhythm, you don't really think much. You just you just keep going. But towards the end, then you start to think about how much this is really hurting and what am I doing to myself. You can also tell from this view that um, I'm giving quite a lot of effort. Generally, I try to keep as, as smooth and still as possible to conserve energy, but um, as you can see, I'm still doing four, 400 to 430 watts, which is quite a lot. And it's taking me, it's taking quite a lot of effort to actually do that and uh, rocking a lot on the, on the saddle. Just, just to keep over the gear. Such beautiful scenery, isn't it? I wasn't really concentrating on that while I was riding, to be honest. But now at least I get to appreciate it. Cutting the apex. Sometimes when you're climbing, cutting the apex is not, some can not be the fastest line. Uh, not, not this climb in particular, but in steeper climbs when, um, sometimes when you cut the apex, the climb actually gets steeper on the inside. So, um, just because it's the shortest line doesn't mean it'll be the easiest or fastest line. But for this climb, you can, it stays pretty constant, so I kind of knew you could just cut the corners as much as possible without crossing the white line, of course. One of the really nice things I found about this climb was how smooth the roads were. In Christchurch, the roads are quite a bit rougher, more dead. So it required quite a bit more effort to go faster. But on this road, you can feel it's so much nicer. I felt like I was in a European climb today. Not often I climb in the drops, but I'm going 40k an hour, so I'm going pretty quick here at the moment. I think I'm a bit too tall and lanky to be a Pantani, but <laughs> seems to be working. So at this moment I'm sort of realising we're getting close to the top. There's about three, four minutes of effort left. And um, I'm in a world of pain chewing the stem. So it's just final efforts. Just biting the stem, giving everything you've got. Knowing that the top's just there. But also, these three minutes take probably longer than the whole climb itself did. Although that's what it feels like. You can hear the panting going on. Now I'm really regretting going so hard at the start. 
Definitely feeling it in the legs now. Quite a cool angle, this you get to really see how much effort I'm putting in just to keep over this gear. Thank you, Tom, for that hooting. The moral support was much appreciated at the time. With just about two minutes to go, and you can see that the effort I'm putting in is, I cannot go any harder. There's just, it's not possible. I remember thinking, I'm so close at the moment. 12, I was aiming for under 13 minutes, seeing as Brendan Canty's time was 13.05, I believe. And I knew, oh, I needed to go really hard now get out the saddle here, kick, go real hard. Just to maintain that speed, stretch out the legs. I've been sitting the whole climb. Just open up the legs, get the lactic acid flowing. Unfortunately, sometimes it doesn't work. You, once the lactic gets flowing, your legs will feel real seized up and heavy for a long time afterwards, which they did. Not surprisingly though. And, uh, yeah, I, I can remember just telling myself, Keegan, you need, to, you need to stand up and sprint and just go as hard as you can. You've got, on the floor here, there should be a line there with just over a K, under a K to go. And I just saw the time I had and I knew this is gonna be so close. I need to stand up and just give it everything I have left. I was telling myself, you need a sprint, Keegan. Get out, go harder. That extra mile could be the difference. But I, my body would not do it. I could not stand. It just physically, I just had to keep sitting down, keep going the way I could. It was also a slight headwind, very little, but everything to make it more demoralizing. It's amazing if you think, oh, I could have just stood up and gave it that much more, but trust me, I told myself, Keegan, sprint, you've got eight seconds left, 50 meters to go, come on, sprint, you can do it. But I couldn't stand at all. I just had to sit and watch the time go by. Uh, uh, and there's 13 minutes uh, of max effort let out all at once. <laughs> broken. Oh. Feeling pretty hurt just watching it at the moment. <laughs> oh. I missed it. Four seconds. Tom laughing at my failure. Well, there it is, my 1 in 20 record attempt. Unfortunately, I just fell short, but I'll be back. Back to conquer the 1 in 20.